Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today is going to be fun. After literally almost a year of having this painting series in mind, today is the day that I'm finally actually going to start working on it. And it's not even like it was the worst case of procrastination ever. Well, <laughs> Maybe it was, but no, it wasn't a particularly like necessary thing for me to work on and there was always something more important that I actually needed to do. Uh, but the second part of this like, oh yay, finally I'm working on it, is that ideally I want it done in like 12 days. <laughs> and there's eight very involved paintings to be done. But when I first came up with this painting series idea, I thought it might be really cool to show sort of a behind the scenes process of how to create a cohesive painting series because that's not something I'd ever really seen done before. And <laughs> I know why now, because no one can ever find time to do an entire painting series for one video. So that kind of half might be this video. I might make that a separate video. I guess we will just see what happens, which actually like, regardless of the whole year thing, this is somewhat piggybacking off of an idea I had like actually multiple, like probably six, seven years ago that I never went through with. So this is like an accumulation of a lot of ideas over a long period of time. Like literally in my good old ideas book that I have here, I have, th I did thumbnail everything out and I have since made nicer thumbnails than these really solidifying things but we have plans at least. We're not going into this completely blind at 12 days to go. But I've had these particular thumbnails done, if you can see them since they're kind of light and scratchy and I'm sure they will make absolutely no sense to anybody other than me. But these have been done for probably like 11 months. I have these thumbnails or like iterations of these thumbnails in multitudes of books at this point. These are just sort of the ones that are all together and the closest to being in their final form. And what are these paintings you say? Well the plan is they're going to be very sort of Art Nouveau-ish style, very detailed portraits with a lot of different elements of Sarah Paulson's American Horror Story characters, which means there are eight of them because there's a few that I combined and I left out one. And the entire reason that I want to get these done now is because the new season of American Horror Story starts in less than two weeks and I want them done before then so that I don't have to do more. No, but this really might be something that I continue to add to over the time of the different characters to add to the series so they're all nice and uniform but I'd like to stop at eight for now. As you can tell, eight is already a problem for me to commit to apparently. But as I have sort of mentioned already, there has been a decent amount of prep work that I've already done and I know I have a bunch of screen recordings so I'm gonna put those here while I talk about exactly where we are now and what I'm doing for the rest of this video. And I will just say even if you're not like an American Horror Story fan or have any clue what I'm talking about, I hope that me just sort of talking and going through the design elements and how I just go about coming up with extremely interesting intricate, detailed pieces of art that cohesively go together. I feel like regardless of subject matter, hopefully that's going to come across and there will be some helpful tips of some sort in here for anyone that is looking at possibly tackling a painting series or illustration series of their own. But from what I can remember for the thumbnail sketches, I did figure out a very specific digital canvas size so that they all adhered to the same ratio in that regard, but I also realized that a really good idea would be to have her be roughly the same size. So I mocked up one sort of base layer and I'm going to be redrawing all of it like uh, her character in each one. The sketch looks far more done and I did change each one, like I switched the hair out and everything, but that is getting completely redrawn. It's not going to be the same face sketch for each one. I want to make them all look exactly like they do in each season, so there's not going to be any of the same faces, even though I do want them to look really, you know, uniform and even. It was just to figure out the sizing and layout of all of the other design elements, which it's been a while since I did the thumbnail, so hopefully this is sort of coming across in whatever 
whatever I have for screen recording. But I know that was super helpful and it did really work out because I know regardless, like obviously the canvas size is the same size, but the different elements are going to be different shapes within that. So that's going to hopefully vaguely be the same size, but I know 100% for sure the character themselves is going to be uniform across all of them. There are a couple that have a couple characters on them, so they are in a bit of a different orientation compared to everyone else. I'm pretty sure I left everybody else in like the center point of the canvas or just a zone that worked very well, like very balanced for the design elements around them. And I think they are all in the same location, but the dual characters did have to sort of split that distance between them. So the whole reason we got to this entire concept of a series is I did really feel like working on, <laughs> not that it panned out at all, but I did really want to try and look at tackling some sort of painting series just as like a project for me to try and draw and paint more. I really have not done a lot of that for the last couple of years because I've been focusing on like designing art supplies and all of the other stuff that you see me do here and haven't really been focusing on especially like really finished final pieces of artwork that are of a style that really pleases me or that I'm interested in working on. Art Nouveau sort of hybrid-ish paintings and stuff are a style that I find really fun to do. I love having to work in all of these intricate details and create interesting design elements and I have been a very long American Horror Story fan and so this concept seemed like a fantastic sort of mesh of what I wanted to do artwork style wise and also thematically something that would work very well for that style. Which like I mentioned a long time ago, I almost did, and like seven, eight, nine years ago or something, I had come up with a concept that I was going to do like literally the different seasons of American Horror Story where you had like the main building because a lot of the time the seasons have a very distinct building that the story sort of revolves around and then all of the characters surrounding it. So for a lot of these and originally the initial plan with my thumbnail sketches was going to use the buildings in all of them sort of as like a main design element. There are a few seasons where there isn't really a building so I've had to modify that concept a little but for the most part if there is a distinct building it is in the design of the sort of character. I don't even know what you want to call these just the design of the painting. Looking at my really rough thumbnail sketches here for the most part with what I can remember of the, like the redone thumbnails which I did digitally. I like I almost got this series started. I cleaned these thumbnails up except for one which I'm still having a bit of problems just you know coming up with a nice cohesive design. I cleaned up all these thumbnails and had like super solid 90% their concepts for seven and a half way there out of eight in like a day, two days. I thought I was on a roll. The pathway to the finish line of actually getting these started. No idea what happened because it still hasn't started yet. Uh, but the secondary part of this that I know was like a factor of why I didn't start it immediately is because there is a bit of a large debate in my brain at the moment as to the medium in which these are going to be done. Because obviously normally I'm a traditional artist and that would be generally what I would be gravitating towards but all of a sudden I had a thought like you know these are going to be super detailed. I knew I was already digitally sketching them because any sort of illustration painting whatsoever that has like a million different design elements of varying, you know, symmetrical proportions and straight lines and even shapes and all of that stuff. It gets done digitally because it's way safer and then I can just move stuff around and have everything fit well. So the sketches were automatically getting done digitally and then transferred of some variety on to the traditional base of choice, whether that was watercolor paper, toned paper, wood panel, whatever. Uh, so that was a done deal. But then Einstein over here decided to just have like a moment of what if and I 
thought, what if I just did them all digitally? Like the whole thing digitally, color it, ink it, ink it, you know, like do the line art nicer, you know, maybe just to completely forego the super rough sketch and see if you could create something off of the thumbnail. So that might have made it faster. Trying to speed up the process a bit there with maybe possibly even foregoing the entire sketch and just really going from thumbnail or adding a bit to the thumbnail straight to more like solid inking phase. And that's still where we're at. I'm not not 100% sure which way I'm going because there are pros and cons to both. I even considered sort of a hybrid model because the main thing that's holding me back from doing them 100% digitally is I really don't like how I personally manage or not manage <laughs> is more the situation uh, line art digitally. I of course was thinking about I could do it on my Cintiq, I could do it on my iPad, you know, pros and cons for both, but it's still regardless, I just, for some reason, I haven't figured out the magic pen trick pressure sort of situation layout for me personally for digital line art. And seeing as these are Art Nouveau based, there is a lot of line art. It's not just, you know, like an organic painting without lines. There is very definitive, distinct lines that need to be nice and fluid and clean. And so I did at one point consider, which again, haven't ruled out anything, that I actually look at doing the line art traditionally, scanning it, take a picture of it, whatever, and then color it digitally. So that is still up in the air a bit. But yeah, I need to now go solidify the first sketches. The plan is to do these in order. The one that I'm having the most problem with design-wise is number seven of eight, so I don't really have to worry about that one for a while. Obviously, it's something that I want to be actively thinking about and really get solved, but I don't necessarily have to worry about that one too far, assuming that I do them in order, which has always been my plan to do the characters in season order. So I'm going to start solidifying the sketch for number one in the series and also actually decide on how I'm finishing these pieces off. Well, we are officially doing them traditionally. I figured even regardless of the possible time increased due to drying time, it was literally going to take me like an entire week just to do the digital line art on one. So we're doing them traditionally. I've actually already gone to Curry's, which is a Canadian, well, Ontario art supply store, because when I decided that I was going to do them traditionally, I figured we might as well make these fancy. So I went out and I bought a bunch of 300 pound watercolor paper and I've already cut it down to size. I have it right in front of me here. Like this stuff is wild. I have a couple of sheets of 300 pound paper, uh, but I did not have enough because I did keep the size 12 by 18, which is what I designated the digital canvases as, as their sort of native sizing to keep them all the same. They were specifically 12 by 18. So figured might as well leave them at that. It's a decent size. It's not like super massive, but it's it's big enough that I'm going to be able to get all of the detail into it. So got all those and let me tell you having to cut up $25 a sheet paper is nerve wracking. <laughs> I also have a couple of things here that I want to do of a bit of a DIY that I figured I would show you because I think this might be interesting and helpful for a bunch of people. So I'm going to turn you around so we can actually see what I'm talking about. So excuse the mess, but this is of course the area that I usually work, but in front of me I have this calyx wall which you can see here I have a couple of these hooks that I 3d printed that generally hold up my swatch sheet for my main watercolor palette but what I do all of the time when I print off you know reference or a sketch or something that I want to transfer is I normally basically just masking tape the sheet for reference like onto the cross beams of these cubes and I decided since I am going to be using a lot more like a paper reference for all of the sketches for this series to upgrade that setup a little. So I have these bar magnets and then these magnetic clips. So what I'm going to do is similar to my iPad, I'm going to take this camera off of this tripod so that we can actually go over here and see this stuff. So I'm going to do something similar to my little Apple pencil hack thing, which is absolutely one of my favorite DIYs that I've ever done. All it is is a couple of disc magnets like MacTac 
Egypt or whatever to the calyx and they are in the same positions that the actual pencil has them on and it just snaps on there like that when I don't want it attached to my iPad and I use that thing all of the time. Honestly, my Apple Pencil probably sits there more often because I'm taking my iPad Pro different places and stuff or just around the house and I don't always want the pencil attached to it to possibly get lost and stuff. So that sits there all of the time. So going to take uh, probably a couple of these bar magnets and attach them to maybe a couple of places on this. Honestly, like these hooks do work well, but I think the clips are going to work better because a lot of the time if there's like too much stuff on those, like pretty much the only reason it's working is because my main swatch sheet is on this like crazy uh, watercolor artboard. So it's super stiff. I might essentially replace the hooks with the magnets, but yeah, gonna attach a bunch of these to my wall and we're gonna have a super hopefully cool setup going on here. Now obviously because the clips that I was using were magnetic themselves, if you had a magnetic surface of some sort you could just use the clips right off the bat, but I have like no magnetic surfaces in my studio and of course I did want them directly in front of me so the bar magnets were my workaround. I did want to specifically mention that I made sure to check the polarity of the two magnets before I attached the adhesive to them just so that there were no issues down the line. Alrighty, so I decided to put three bars up in a couple of somewhat strategic locations that I typically would tape paper to. So I've got one on this down bar that's sort of where the uh, hooks held stuff, but it's probably going to be a lot easier and better that it's up a little higher, although I might just leave those hooks there for simplicity at the moment. And then I have one over here and one over here that obviously, you know, these magnetize to and can move around depending on the size of paper or I can have multiple pieces of paper held up. So that was a super easy DIY that I think is going to come in super handy. Let me, do I have something? I have a swatch sheet that I could try up on here. There's a couple of swatch sheets and a sleeve protector being held up no problem by that configuration. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. That's going to be super handy, I'm sure, in the next few days, the rest of the week, whatever. Um, and yeah, so there's your little DIY tip of the week. So I've got the first sketches all printed out here for me to start transferring onto the actual watercolor paper. There's actually three up here on my new wonderful little concoction of paper holders, whatever we're going to call it. So there are three there. Obviously I'm going to be working on the other five, but I did manage to get three sketches sort of finalized and ready to go. Obviously there might be changes and details added as I'm actually drawing it on the actual paper. But for now those are the finalized digital sketches. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start transferring the first one onto the watercolor paper.
here is the final drawing. We are not going to talk about how long it has taken me to get to this point, but I had to redraw a bunch of stuff. I did end up transferring on the pattern and I had to redraw all of that because it was smudging all over the place, which I was not planning on because overall that really didn't need to be outlined because I'm kind of going to just freehand the whole thing with paint because I want the actual Baroque design area to be a lighter color. So that's going to get free-handed with some sort of most likely gouache or acrylic gouache once we get there. What else? I did some detail work on the roof and stuff and also of course drew in the circles. Now the original plan was to outline this, which I still might do, but I'm not entirely sure. Well, first of all, I've already like destroyed my hand. I've like got KT tape and have had multiple braces and stuff on because my arm is dying from the amount of drawing and transferring and not breathing, drawing straight lines and all of that fun stuff today. Uh, so my arm is really in no position to be outlining things at the moment and like gripping onto a pen, but also this has taken me forever to get to and I'm still a little undecided about the outline. Like I have this test paper that I was working on here playing around with some options because I wasn't even sure what medium I wanted to outline it with because, you know, multi-liner, Copic, you know, some variety of one of those fun pens over there would obviously work well, but I'm not sure if that's like a little too bold. I don't know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start painting this. I'm going to leave, like obviously I literally redrew everything from the transfer, which normally has to happen anyway because of how much the transfer paper smudges. Uh, so the line art on it right now, even though it's pencil, is pretty solid. I did take my time and you can see all the crazy little details in the house are there and I'm sticking by that outlining with the pencil. So I'm going to leave it like this, I'm going to start painting it, and then I can decide later once I feel like the painting is done what I want to do about the outline. I'm sure there will be places that I do want outlined in something a little darker, whether it's like some sort of pencil or something, like especially around the outside, just detailing that up. But for the most part, this might actually pretty much just stay with pencil outlines. But I guess you'll find out later throughout this video what I end up deciding on. The first one obviously was going to be the hardest to figure out and then everything from then on is going to you know, follow the same steps. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how this sketch turned out and I'm actually really excited to start painting it. Very nervous because this did take forever, but excited. Apologies for the weird angle, but I figured I would talk while I did the extraordinarily monotonous job of uh, painting on individual bricks, which in hindsight might not have been the greatest idea considering I have done most of these with basically not breathing to keep my hand super steady. But anyway, you can obviously see that I'm not even close to being finished. Uh, so my initial hopes of getting them all finished by my sort of designated date are, you know, clearly not going to happen. I could like not sleep for the next however many days and I still wouldn't get them all done. Uh, so the newish plan 
is that I'm going to try and get half of it done and then the second half in the next week. Maybe, we will see, because that still might not exactly be a feasible plan. But, you know, obviously I have, I don't want to say put these off for a year, but I've been trying to work on the series for a year and I don't want to just, you know, rush it now. So I'm having fun doing these. It's been a long time since I've taken like a designated chunk of time to really paint anything to great extent. So this is a nice little break and change for me. So I obviously want these to turn out well because I have spent, you know, a year contemplating the ideas and coming up with them and finalizing everything. So I don't want to rush the actual execution of said ideas and ruin the whole thing. So that is the new plan. As you can see, I am doing this nonsense <laughs> with the bricks, but the flat color, I was trying to figure out what to do about it, and I figured this was probably the easiest because the flat color just looked too plain, in my opinion. Like, you can kind of see the brick details in the reference, like, you definitely can tell that it's a brick house, so I figured giving it a bit of a texture was going to be the best option for these. I've actually, like, for the areas that are more done how I am doing this, because it, well, if this dries, it's not going to look the same. I'm basically doing all the bricks <laughs> and then going back over just with water and blotting it up so that it sort of blends it in a little more. And yeah, it's actually turning out pretty well. It seems slightly, you know, contradicting considering I'm you know, getting rid of half of the work that I've done, but it's just a little too harsh uh, doing it, like just leaving it. So that is why that is happening, and I think it's turning out pretty well. Like, this is not an incredibly difficult thing, it's more like a monotonous, annoying <laughs> task. Um, you know, just dotting my brush along in vaguely straight fashion. It's not the most difficult of things, so I don't mind it. It's just, you know, more work than I was maybe hoping for, considering I have a lot of other stuff to do on this piece still. But yeah, that is my update and my thoughts. So I guess I'm gonna go back to doing this and try and get these lines a little straighter <laughs> and more in line than they are, considering I'm talking while doing this. But yeah. Hopefully this will not take me absolutely forever to get finished. <laughs>
So this is how things are looking at the moment. I would say things are like 90-95% there. Basically I wanted to film because I want to start working on this background pattern area and originally I figured I was going to do it in gouache but I thought for better control I would actually do it in some ink. So I'm probably going to mix this, what is this, yellow ochre or something in with some white to probably lighten it up a bit in my little inkwell palette thing here that is absolutely seen better days so that I can use a dip pen just for more precise control so that I can just have more even lines and I can actually breathe for once since again you know all of these very particular lines I haven't been breathing a whole lot all day so I'd like to breathe better so I'm gonna do that with a dip pen instead and yeah probably just put headphones in and concentrate for a few hours on detailing this entire thing up and then figuring out the sort of line art situation from there. And here we have it. The first one is done with a slight asterisk beside it because really I need to probably at least have a two to truly figure out the specific logistics. If there's any little stylistic changes between them, they are uniform enough in like content and style that I'm not super worried about the consistency of the materials. Like for instance, this obviously has acrylic India ink combination in the back here which the other ones probably won't have so the whole line art situation is still a bit up for debate I do really like how this looks right now I just you know the other ones might be outlined a little more uh, distinctly especially the character so I'm gonna leave this for now and go to the next one which I've actually been drawing because I nearly killed my arm transferring the other one I decided to start transferring this one sort of in between it just to give my arm some breaks and stuff so this is now Actually, it is all transferred, but I still need to finish drawing it, but I wanted to show you it now because I think I am actually going to outline the building with some multi-liners just because this one is a lot more structured and I'm just worried about smudging it all over the place. So I think I'm going to outline this now. Like I haven't even finished drawing all of the bricks on the building itself, but I want to outline all the windows so they are nice and clean while I can still see where the windows are before I have like a billion lines all over the place with bricks and then just go from there. But this one definitely is going to be outlined lined in multi-liner. I was going for the Copic multi-liners. I know they're super waterproof and stuff so that was always the plan for this because the background is very structured and not natural. I don't know. It's like all of this is like stained glass so the 
like cross beam lead bits that are all here it might it just exclusively be marker ink of some kind uh, not actually like a painted by hand so that they are more uniform and I can use a ruler and have it all be nice and clean like that uh, but yeah the border part definitely getting outlined in marker and then again person slightly up for debate because I don't want there to be tons of really harsh outlines but this one does need to be more structured I feel like than the other one so gonna start on that Well, this is what, like five plus hours of freehanded brick drawing looks like down here. I'll pull it up if I can. It's running out of space there. There you go. Yeah, a lot of bricks. Um, and I also outlined the border portion. I will be outlining the background skylight stained glass thing too. Her, I'm not sure yet. I think I've already mentioned this, um, but I really just feel like painting. I'm sick of drawing lines, so I'm going to start coloring this in and then I can, you know, figure out the line art and stuff for the background once I have some color down. Here is what the third one is looking like right now. You probably can tell it's looking a little more unusual than they have been. Basically, I was trying to see if I could minimize the amount of time I was spending like redoing stuff essentially. So I went ahead and I outlined all of the upper fence portions so that I didn't have to 
redraw them. I figured I would go ahead and just ink those in fast before they just inadvertently got rubbed away. And yeah, like you can see, I haven't even redrawn all of the different fence spokes or whatever in the background. I, of course, have spent most of my time redrawing in the house, which even then, that is not all of the detail, but I'm at the point that I think I'm going to start inking that as well as the filigree around the outside, just so that there's some more definition so that I can actually tell what on earth is going on in these certain sections before I continue to draw more and stuff. This video feels like the epitome of that whole like meme internet thing where like person said one thing and then the narrator chimes in and is like and they did not do that thing that they just said they were gonna do. <laughs> yeah I just wanted to sit down I guess talk about some updated thoughts plans and things that have been happening over the last couple of days namely the fact that I almost broke my finger yesterday. <laughs> It still doesn't feel ideal and just the convoluted events that led up to this are just completely unexplainable and would take forever in internet terms. So summary, I essentially got whacked with flying debris. <laughs> Yeah, my knuckle is interesting, which thankfully it is on my left hand, which is not the hand that I draw with. Although what I was mostly working on the day that I did do this was a bunch of ruler stuff, which, you know, that is this hand. Uh, and it's just generally slowed me down. On top of the fact that I have officially <laughs> decided to make this series nine, and I think stop it at nine, officially. Cut to me in like a two weeks saying, forget that, we're doing 10. <laughs> No, but I'm not sure how much I talked about. It is, this video has been going on forever for filming, so apologies if I'm repeating stuff. But since the beginning of this video, the 10th season of American Horror Story has premiered, and I thought I was gonna have no issues or self-control problems not worrying about that character, cause it's an interesting looking character. But then they went and did the one thing that would make me change my mind, and made the character a painter. <laughs> So I feel if anything that's like a fitting <laughs> end to the series, but also when I was thinking of the logistics of this since my self-control went flying out the window at the prospect of an artist character, I was thinking about how Nine would look together with the entire series and it actually works out very well. I'm gonna group the entire series together as well as individually, so originally it would have been two rows of four, but having it be three rows of three actually lays them out extremely extremely nicely. I will probably like <laughs> do a little random doodle thing to explain this better since it's more of a visual thing, but it actually works out perfectly. So I'm sucking it up doing the nine, which other than this whole injury thing that's throwing me for a loop, I think I'm going to end this video. I'm not even done the third one, but I think I'm going to stop this video at least at the three and worry about the three. I did actually start drawing up the four, but then I've been like kind of drawing up the four and working on the third one simultaneously, but I think I'm gonna focus on finishing the third one and then this video will just be the first three and then I can focus on the other groups over not a very long period of time and I'm sure they will pop up in other videos, but the three is going to be more manageable. Really, the, the main problem with these is that the first three were the ones with the craziest buildings. They're practically the only ones with the buildings, and the buildings just take forever. Like, I don't care how crazy of like a filigree border detail thing, whatever, that I might be putting in the bottom of the other ones. I could do the craziest thing, and it would still take me like a fifth of the time that the buildings are taking me. They're just 
insane and driving me nuts. So the first three are taking me like a disproportionate amount of time. So I'm glad mentally I kind of realized that because after this I'm just gonna hopefully, <laughs> again, narrator in the background, it's like, hopefully the next ones will take me less time. Uh, but these first three, I'm assuming I've probably taken me a significant more time considering the whole transfer process with the buildings that have like hundreds of lines on them. That is my whole little update cut in here. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go back to painting because that's all I do with my life now. <laughs> and also explain the whole nine things so that you can visually see what I'm talking about. Now, I would not consider it unreasonable to consider how your painting series is going to look laid out altogether. So if I kept it to the eight in the series, this is the general layout that I was assuming I would be going with. It is, you know, pretty much the easiest way to display them, the two rows of four. But when I go to nine, this is what happens. Now, this layout becomes a particularly appealing when you consider the, I guess, specifics of each painting. So this first row of three are the ones with the very definitive houses, so please excuse the extensively rudimentary sketching that you're about to witness me doing. But these three are the ones with the most extreme and obvious houses or buildings in the bottom of them. Now four also has a bit of something going on down here, and technically so does six. They are the last ones that have any sort of building going on in the bottom and they also happen to be the ones with the double characters. Now five, which is the one in the dead center, is actually the most unusual one in the entire series. It is hotel and it is the one that is in the shape of the hotel key. So it is like a very confined shape and just visually to me, it is the one that sticks out as being the most unusual compared to all of the other ones. So this already, I'm sure you can see where I'm going here because it also so happens that seven and eight are the ones that do not have the definitive buildings. So the eighth one is the one that's most figured out. Seven is a bit up in the air still, but number eight is the one with all of the filigree work in the bottom, and I'm sure seven is going to be some sort of design element along those lines to make up for the fact that there's no distinct building that I can put in the bottom there, which means nine could follow the exact same suit, which means these are all very evenly laid out. So other than the idea of ending on an artist character and sort of evening this series out, it just is making the layout of the entire painting series, I feel, quite visually pleasing, at least when I'm considering the particular details within each painting. So yeah, there's my very quick explanation of where my brain is at at the moment. <laughs> I, of course, then spent the remainder of my week finishing up the third piece, which this one actually took quite a long time. At least I felt like it took quite a long time considering the plan for this one was to keep it pretty monochromatic. If you know Coven is the third season, the Coven house and just the entire like aesthetic of Coven is very black and white, so I kept that theme for the entire design element elements around her, but for some reason I just was like second guessing almost every detail in this thing. Not necessarily the color palette, but I think the main thing for me is that this character appears quite prominently years apart. So I wanted to specifically make her look like she does in the third season of the show, but mentally when you talk about this character or this character gets brought up, I mentally visually think of what this character looks like in the eighth season. I'm not sure how many like spoilers here. I want to keep this new drunk for anyone that has no clue what I'm talking about, but I basically sort of came up with like this weird hybrid sort of in-between thing because I feel like I'm probably not the only person that mentally visually thinks of this character looking possibly a different way because there are differences when you have that many years apart and just like wardrobe and character and design choices. So that was my little freak out in the middle there. There. It also might not have helped that I would consider this my favorite of her characters, so that's just extra pressure that I possibly didn't need on this piece. 
I'm also in general just very happy to be past the three crazy building ones because I am just so sick of drawing insane buildings. The asylum literally had 70 windows because I was so fed up I ended up counting them one day. <laughs> And I think that's going to be where I call number three finished. I did a sort of a mess up a bit here. I outlined the, like, this side of the hair with fine liner when I didn't actually do that for the other one, so I spent most of the day uh, fixing that up and trying to make it blend in a little better there, which it's a little stark. It's looking like crazy on camera. In person, it's not super terrible or anything or, like, obviously fixed or whatever you want to call it, but that might be something that I have to touch up in like Photoshop depending on how crazy it looks with the picture that I take. Yeah, now it's time to take the tape off of this and then I guess wrap this video up. And here are what the first three finished paintings look all laid out on my desk, which they're very like unevenly displayed, but they're massive and I really do not have the filming space uh, for them right now, especially in groups like this. But I did want to, I guess, see even for myself what they all look like laid out together. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how those have all turned out so far. Hopefully the rest of the series continues in the same fashion, I guess. But this is going to be where I and what I'm sure is an extremely long studio vlog. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.